that Benaniah fought two Egyptians, even not having a weapon, he took the spear from the Egyptian and whipped his tail. That's the Hamilton translation. It then goes on to say, and here's the part I really want you to get. It says that on a snowy day, Benaniah went into a pit and fought a lion. Okay, somebody will get that. It says that Benaniah, on a snowy day, went into a pit and fought a lion. That's a powerful statement, powerful story, a powerful testimony for you and me. Because it shows us as Christians that we need to be bold like Benaniah. Benaniah was honored because he was bold enough to face a lion. Now, I, I, I come by to tell you first two things you need to understand. First, you need to understand that God calls the righteous to be bold. He does not give us excuses. He does not allow us to fall back. But he says, if you call my name, if you trust in me, you better be bold. But then, here's the next challenge. You've you got to get this. You have a lion to face. You have a lion to face. Just like Ben and I, you too have a lion to fight. Now, I know this is passing some of you by because you're not worried about any lions and you think this is a cakewalk and everything is easy. But I've come by to tell you in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, verse 8, that the Bible says that there is a lion. It says, be sober. Be sober. Be watchful. Be mindful. Because there is a lion that wants to, an enemy that wants to tear you apart. Don't think that the devil is content with your kids being all right. He doesn't just want them to flunk out of school, but he wants them dead. Don't think that the devil is okay with you having a happy and healthy marriage. He wants to tear it apart. Don't think that the devil is okay with you having health and strength and peace and joy. As long as I don't mess with the devil, he won't mess with me. Can I tell you the honest to God truth? The honest to God truth is too many people think that this is a game, but this is a real fight. In fact, it's a war, and you better be in it because you are in it. If you're not alert and if you're not ready, you will discover that you are dead. The imagery is of a lion. If you ever watch lions attack, lions always go after the weak. If there's a herd of animals, the lion looks for the one that is weak. The one that is running slightly behind the pack. This weak, this weak, you know, they, they by themselves just a little bit. And, and, and that's what the devil does. Oh man, I can see she hasn't been prayed up. I, I, I can see he, he's been playing with sin. I, I, I can see, I, I can see he's right on the picket. And you think that it's okay to pass by your prayer time, to pass by your Bible study time, to pass by your devotion time, not to come to church uh, but once a month. You think it's all right, you're cool in the game, but you don't know that the enemy, the devil, is waiting for you to be weak. And when you are weak is when he will pass. And the problem is you don't even see him coming. Uh, they, they used to have a game in the hoods, uh, in, in the rough parts of the neighborhoods, uh, uh, okay, the ghettos, uh, and one of the things they would do is they, they would call it the knockout game. Y'all don't know what that is, the knockout game. But what they would do, they would just find unsuspecting people, disconnected, unconnected, no relationship, and they just walk up to them, and they knock them out. They would literally swing on them and knock them out. And news reporters and news reports were, were, were telling the story about a strange thing is happening. People are just walking up to individuals who are minding their business and they're punching them and literally knocking them out. Someone even died after they got hit. Well, just like that, the enemy is playing the knockout game. He's waiting for you and looking for you to be unaware, to be unready, and to be weak. There's one movie called The War Room and in it, Miss Clara is an older saint. She's an older saint. She has this, 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 this really firm wig she wears. And she's a, 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 a powerful saint. And they show over and over again with her hands up in the air saying, Jesus, start a revival! I mean, she's just a passionate sister. Jesus, move! Right? And so she says, Jesus, send somebody to me. And so she's getting ready to sell her house, and the realtor comes to her house. The realtor comes to her house, she begins to show her the house, and, and Mrs. Clara says, let me show you my favorite room. It's a little closet with one chair and a whole lot of uh, letters or notes on the wall. She said, this is my favorite room. This room right here is my war room. And the realtor's like, okay, I've seen the laundry room, I've seen the kitchen, and I've seen the bedroom, but I haven't seen the war room. So when she opens the door, she's... Unimpressed and finds it quite strange, and she begins to say, Oh, you don't have a war room? 
You don't have a prayer strategy. You don't have a plan for the attack. You need a war room because you're under attack. Now, unbeknownst to Mrs. Clara, the realtor who looked pretty fine, distinguished, and elegant was going through some great personal kill, kill, and destroy. And if you play with him, you will lose it and you'll wonder, how did I get here? First, you have a lion to face. I need you to get this. I need you to feel this. Because I'm convinced that the challenge with the American church and the church of our day is we think this is a game. This is not a game. This is a war. And there will be casualties. First, you have a lion to face. But then you have a testing day. You say, well, Reverend, how is that different than facing a lion and a testing day? Well, the difference between facing a lion, stay with me, and a testing day, come back. It, it, it's when the point or the moment or the season when the enemy, the devil, we don't even say that in church anymore. The devil launches all of his attacks. Okay, y'all not going to be any football fans here. I, I'm a pseudo football fan, but I'm getting more and more into the game I enjoy. And, and I happen to like the guy named RG3. RG3, he's a, he's a quarterback. That means he passes the ball, and, and he's protected by a line. A, a line. They, they call him the offensive line. Well, every now and then when the quarterback is getting ready to pass the ball, the offensive line, who should be protecting him, will oftentimes or sometimes or occasionally face what is called a blitz. A blitz is when every player on the opposite team rushes the quarterback with your neighbor at the same time. Every player goes directly after the quarterback, every single one. And it's then that he's under attack. What can I tell you? There will be blitz in your life. There will be seasons in your life when the enemy launches everything at the same time. There will be seasons in your life when everything happens at the same time. When somebody dies, when somebody comes to get you, when your job lays you off, when your friends don't want to talk to you, it will happen. It will be a blitz. And it's in that season that you have to understand that you've got to be bold. That you can't be scared. That you can't fall back because there's nowhere to go. You've got to get on your knees and say, God, I'm ready to fight this fight. I, I'm ready to pass this test. I'm going to do like Job. I, I'm going to look to you, God. I'm going to do like Moses. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to do like, like, like Daniel and the lion did. God, this is you and me, baby. We can do this. No, this is this. you, you got to get that in your spirit. Okay, okay. Uh, there, there are some, no disrespect intended. I know, uh, please just, just allow me. Uh, uh, there, there are some advantages to being from the ghetto. Now, I'm not from the ghetto, but I lived some years in the ghetto. Yeah, and, and you learned how to walk, how to act. You, you had a whole different, you didn't walk like, like you, you, you walk like this. Mess with me if you want to. Mess, mess with me. Go ahead, go ahead. You, you don't know what I'll do, man. You, you don't know what I've got on me. You don't know what I will do. Well, that's the kind of attitude that saints have to have. They have to be so bounty bounty. They have to be so serious about the kingdom of God. They have to be so intense about the things of God that they're ready for the enemy. And they're telling the enemy, if you come this way, you're going out. Right. Come on. Right. I would the saints of God. I would the, the, the people of God, the saints of God, were so prayed up that they were scaring the hell out of the enemy. I would the saints of God were so fired up that the enemy was afraid of what was happening at 632 last night. Because he knows there's a church, there's a movement of God, there's a people of God that are on fire for him. They refuse to play with sin. They refuse to play with gossip. They refuse to play with mess because they're focused on the kingdom of God. All they're asking is, how can we reach one more person? I'm taking stuff back from the enemy's camp. I'm not afraid of him. He ought to be afraid of me because I'm hooked up with God. Okay, all right, all right. A testing day. I'm Pastor Hodari Hamilton. And I'm First Lady Khadija Hamilton. With First Baptist Church. And we want to invite you to your war room. Your war room is the place of prayer. In Matthew chapter six, verse six, it tells us to go into the closet and close the door and pray. And your father who sees will answer prayer. We want to encourage you to join us for this event and this engagement as we look at the power of prayer. August 30th, 1.40 p.m. And then it goes on to say, but he will give you, come on, listen to this, listen to this. He will give you a way of escape. That, that God says, when you come into your testing time, when you come into your trial, 
when you come into the hardship, when, when there's a blitz all around you, God will open up the window. God will open up the door. God will open up a way. He'll make sure that you won't be overtaken by the text. God says, I got you. All you got to do is be willing and waiting for me. I will rescue you. I will come to your rescue. I'll come to you and I'll make sure. I'll be there. You be very sure. I got you. Amen. You better recognize that God says he will rescue you. This, this could be a test when the devil has you and you, you're so tempted to go back to the sin that you used to do. You, you can smell the, the, the liquor in the air. And you're so down and discouraged. And you want to quit and give up? If I just got one sip, it would help me feel better. I know it would help me feel better. And just then, you get a text message. You get a text message from a sister from the church. I want you to know I'm praying for you. That's your way of escape. Call them back. Say, hey, God had you call me just at the right time. You at the party, and they get ready to start pass, pass, and pump. And just then, oh, I'm serious. It's, 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 People, this is serious. Amen. This is serious. You know, every year people take their life right down the street of the university. This is serious. And right there, you get you, you get a, a, a epiphany that you got a special test coming up. You say, you know what? I wasn't gonna drop it like it was hot, but I gotta leave. Amen. A way of escape. I tell my wife when I do weddings. Y'all gonna be mad with this. When I do weddings, I don't stay for the wedding party. Oh no, oh no. After I do the wedding, I say, God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. And I go home to my wife. Amen. Brothers will understand that later on. Amen. Amen. So you need, you, amen. Amen. You need to understand. Some sisters don't understand it. Uh, you go to a wedding, you just look around and see. And never mind. All right. Uh, we too have a lion to face. We too have a testing time. And I got to tell you real quick that the testing is not to hurt you. The testing is to bless you. The testing does several things. The testing is partially for preparation. Because when you understand that a test is coming, then you systematically prepare. When you understand that there is a testing day, then you systematically, you fast and pray systematically. Once a month, I got to fast and pray. So when the test comes, I'll have everything I need. You, 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 you're, you're systematic. You don't wait. But you said people who are in the military don't wait to get in shape. They, they are, they, they, so it's preparation. But not only is it preparation, but the test is always about promotion. Amen. You miss it. The test is always about promotion. God wants to bless you. And one of the ways he blesses his people is he allows them to go through a season of testing. Now, some of the testing we can't explain and some of the testing we don't like, but look, it's always about a blessing in store for you. Don't think it's about God being sadistic or, or him allowing stuff to happen just to allow it to happen. Well, he's trying to bless you. When your child goes through that, that lesson, God's trying to mature your child. When you go through that time of when you feel so broken, you can't make it, God is trying to bless you. You're going to have a savings account next time around. Okay, all right. The test is a blessing. Here, let me give you two more and I'll be gone. So here's the question. Why was Benaniah able to be successful or ace his test? Why and how are we able to be successful? Uh, what, what boldness does is it allows us to do this. First, you will be bold when you really want to please the king. I, I'm in the text because you see me. <laughs> Y'all, this is... When you really want to please the king, you will do things that you did not know you could do. This comes from 2 Samuel 23, 17. It tells the story of when David was at Adullam. Adullam was a time when David and his men were really a fleeing and pseudo-fighting Saul. And now David is now, he's hiding out, if you will, in the cave of Adullam uh, from Saul. But he says... Openly, I am so thirsty. I wish I could drink from the well of Bethlehem. And Benaniah overhears this, and that's the strong tower of the enemy. I've got to get this. That, that's, that's the stronghold of the enemy. That's where the enemy's camp is. Benaniah overhears the king say, I want to drink water from that well. So Benaniah, a warrior, hears the king's desire, and it's behind enemy's lines. Now he knows what the king wants, 
but it's hard to do. So Ben and I says to his, his bravest brothers, he says, y'all got to strap up. They said, oh, we got to strap up. Yeah, strap up. We got to go. And so he rides his horse into the enemy's camp, taking the life of the enemy as he goes. And he gets a cup of water. He covers it and he rides back to King David. He says, David, I brought you some water from the well of Bethlehem. Woo! <laughs> Is there anybody who want to be like that with God? Is there anybody who says, God, if this is what you're calling me to, if you're calling me to do something great, if you're calling me to be part of a revolution and a revival, God, I don't care how, and how deep it is, I don't care how hard it is, I'll go behind the enemy lines. I'll snatch back what you want, God. I'm doing for you, God. Send me, I'll go. God is saying, I'm looking for somebody to be that kind of bold. I'm looking for somebody who is less afraid of the enemy and more in love with me. Because when you are in love with God, you will do things you did not know you could do. Only to please God, not to please man, but I've got to please God. God, let me do it, God. God, use me, God. God, I'm willing, God. God, I'll sacrifice, God. God, anything for you, God. God, I love you, God. God, let me sacrifice, God. God, let me be you, God. God! Yeah. Yeah. When you got that kind of love for God, you will literally do things you did not know you could do. Only to please God. Because you know he can do it. Yeah. Through you. If you stay with me, one of the one of the, the, the base fundamental truths of theology is a relationship between love and fear. Did you know that? Like the Bible says it this way. I hadn't planned to give this to you, but it's needed. Like love cast out all fear. You see, God understands. That the hardest thing that you will have to deal with on a day-to-day -day and hour-to-hour -hour basis is some form of fear. Amen. And he says, the only power in you that's greater than the enemy's fear tactics is the love that you have in your heart. Amen. So when you have so much love for God, his love will wash away all the evil. Well, not only was he bold because of his love for God, his passion for God, but he was bold because God built Benaniah to be bold. God built him to be bold. God, I, I used to want to be a running back with all my heart. Oh man, I was gonna be the I was fast too. I was gonna be the best running back there ever was because I was fast. Uh, uh, my, my dad told me, son, you're not built to be a running back. You don't have the, the physical makeup to be a running back. You take five hits in one game, you might be in the hospital, son. That, that's not for you. And look, uh, can I tell, tell you that the Father has come by to tell you through me that God has built you to be bold. Amen. God has built you to be big. God has built you to be bad. You've been made by God to do what God wants you to do. God says, I shaped you, I formed you, I knit you, and I made you, I put in your heart, and I put in your spirit the ministry that I have for you to do before. But the eagle says, oh, a storm is coming, and the eagle goes up real high, and it waits for the storm. Oh, it waits for the storm, it, it waits for the storm. And then when the storm comes, the eagle dives right into the storm. And when it does, its wings are designed so when it stretches out in the storm, that the storm then lifts the eagle up high. And the eagle, without pushing, without straining, in the storm goes higher and higher and higher and then higher. And all I'm trying to say, God says, there's something within you that you cannot explain. There's, there's something within you that vanishes pain. There's something within you that holds back the rain. All that I know is that something within God says, when you face your storm and fly through your storm, he'll take you to higher heights. He'll take you
got to be a couple people over the age of 35 and 40 years old that can testify that it was through the storm that God promoted you. It was through the test. It hurt you. It set you back. It disappointed you. You were counting like, I, I only needed one, two, three. I don't understand, God, how you let it go down like this. But God used that to pick you up, to lift you up, to promote you. Like Joseph said, what you meant for evil, my storm, God said, I'll use it for good. God said, I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. And not just you. But God wants to use you. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We know that you were blessed, and we want to encourage you to invest in sharing the gospel. We get lots of letters from nursing homes and other persons who are home who cannot come to worship. So we want to encourage you to reach them by helping us.